So here's number two of today's tutorial. And um, earlier on we did the double towel, um, which is the, the note that I use pretty much all the time when I'm fishing with up-eyed salmon flies, hair-winged salmon flies, or in this case like a, a traditionally dressed salmon fly. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, and because this is like a, a beginner's tutorial, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a blood knot and I'm going to show you why I use the double turtle on a fly like this, double turtle before a fly, um, a blood knot. So blood knot, up eyed fly, I come from the bottom again. Um, and again, we're going to focus on what our fingers are doing. So uh, thumb and forefinger is really important. Every time I stop to change hands, I'm going to press and hold everything with my thumb and forefinger here. So thumb and forefinger now holds the fly. So one minute, this thumb and forefinger holds the fly there. I push the line through. It's often a part that people get wrong, stupid little thing that people get wrong. So I push that through. You'll see my thumb and forefinger coming up to the eye of the fly. When it arrives there, I grip the eye of the fly with my thumb and forefinger here. So then I take the uh, this end, and I, I am the greedy Scotsman. I don't I don't like wasting nylon, you know. But um, for the for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll just make it a wee bit longer. So we're tying a like a, a half blood knot. So now we get the end, and we double it onto that one. Look, so the fly is now hanging like so. Thumb and forefinger again. Trap the eye of the fly and the line at the apex of the fly. There, like so. So there it is. You've, you've popped it through the eye of the fly. Fly's hanging like so. Thumb and forefinger. Onto there. And now you have this. So you've got your long end and you've got your end going to your fishing rod. So what you do is very easy. These two fingers are the ones that I use to trap the line as I twist it round. So we'll do five twists. One, two, trap, three, trap, four, trap, five. Now the line's trapped between these two fingers, look. So you can zoom in so that you can see all that. I'm gonna undo it again so that you can see that again. So here we go. So remember this is a beginner's tutorial. So it's one, look, you can see both my, my fingers. Now if you've happened to have sawed your fingers off with a, with a saw, if you're a joiner or you work in the forestry or something and you've only got half a finger or you've only got one finger or whatever, uh, you might actually struggle with this. But like most guys that I know with fingers missing, they've, uh, they've got by using some other method. But if you've got all your fingers, you'd even use your toes, but if you've got all your fingers, this is it. So here, the end of the line, and you're going to twist it around five times, each time catching it between that two fingers there. Look, there, round once more, open up the fingers as, as this left hand's got a hold of the whole thing. Remember, thumb and forefinger have still got a grip there, so there's tension between the two points catch it there again round again once more catch it round once more catch it now until it's five times through now you've got this you've got tension again because you've got a hold of the line with this hand a hold of the line with this hand so both lines it's all under tension you don't want to let that go slack at all keep it under tension as you're tying the fly then take the small end and you'll see this little loop of line here i'll try and get it against my um t-shirt you can see that there's a loop of line at the bottom you're going to just pop that through there and as you pop it through grab a hold of it with your thumb and forefinger here again important so you pop that through there and then and then open up that momentarily momentarily and trap the small end so now you have this small end trapped and you have this one so we just pull this tight um, 
pull it down like so and that's called a half blood when you're fishing with nylon of this strength that I've just tied on here it's 20 pounds nylon this is the stuff that I use for the big fish in Norway when we go fishing there um, when you're using this type of nylon a half blood is absolutely fine you could pull that all day and all night and that small end is not going to become any smaller if however you're using some fluorocarbons and very light nylon then I would always suggest to use a full blood knot, which I'm going to show you in a wee second. There's not much difference. However, right at this moment in time, you'll see me doing this, actually, I'm just going to backtrack here. You'll see me doing this with my nice hardy scissors. Best scissors. Absolutely brilliant. And um, anyway, I've got my single hook in there, and I tighten my knot that way. Don't do this. Don't do that and try and tighten it with your hands here or you're going to end up with that barb straight into that finger. And I tell you what that's going to do, that's going to waste fishing time because you're going to be monkeying around trying to get that out. So anyway, here we go. Um, that, that's good. Half blood. And you'll think, oh, that's perfect. That, 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 that flies fishing absolutely spot on. However, the reason that I do the double turtle over this half blood is for the reason I'm just about to show you. Sometimes when you make a bad cast, and we all make bad casts no matter who we are, but sometimes when we make a bad cast, the line will end up like this. Or the knot in this particular uh, tie-in will end up round the side of the eye of the fly and the, the fly is now not going to fish too well at all because that's going to drag through the water. <laughs> that's not to say that a fish isn't going to take that. I've seen plenty of fish take that, by the way. And it's and there's food for thought to say that it's given it something, something different. But at the end of the day, if we like our fly fishing perfectly, then a uh, slack blood knot like this. It's very strong. It's never going to come off, but it's slack. And that's the reason I don't like it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tie another one just right here and right now. I'll try and be as quick as I can. I'll whip this off with my scissors, and I'm just gonna go through it very quickly this time. But I'm gonna show you the difference between a half blood and a full blood note. So it's up from the bottom. We're gonna drop it down on there. Um, we're gonna a nice big end when you're when you're learning this plenty of stuff. Don't be a mean Scotsman like me. Three, four, five, and then through the little end there, but push it right through this time, and then you can see that you've it's went through this small end here. If you zoom in, you'll see that little triangle. It's been through that. Now I'm going to pass it back through this one, this big hole here. So it's been through the small hole, and now I'm going to pass it back through this one. So I'm going to get this type of affair. There's a loop appeared on the line now, and you've got this. The, the knot is tightening up up here. This is what we call a full blood knot. What I like to do is just put a hold of that end, and just pull it a wee bit taut. <laughs> As I pull this down, you can see that the knot's going to slip down onto the eye of the fly. And make sure that that little end is, is not leaving any loops. Then I'm going to take my trusty hardy scissors and I'm going to pull that tight. Getting that end tight as well. If you're fishing for trout uh, or with uh, some forms of fluorocarbon and very light tackle, then that one is the one to use. I'm rubbing my fingers along here just at the moment and with, with this 20 pound nail there's no trouble at all but if you don't wet the knot before tie it, before pulling it together with a blood knot it, the, the heat, the friction um, creates little uh, burns in the nail and you can actually feel them uh, rough parts, you don't want any any of that. So always, always, before tightening the, the knot onto this, if you're using any kind of knot, a little bit of moisture, cool the thing down. It leaves um, water on the, or 
saliva on the nylon and that just forms a lubricant as the knot is being pulled together but there you are blood knot on a really nice old traditional spay fly there i'd actually a fish on that last year cracking fly really good and then i would just trim that off the old guys as i said before in the other video the old guys would never even bother press pulling uh, bother cutting that off they would just leave that on they, they, they saw no point in cutting that off but nowadays we like it to look pretty good and so we'd cut that maybe uh, 10, 10 millimeters from the end there plenty and now you've got a fly well tied on there so the next thing i'm going to do is, is i'm going to go back to the the turtle knot and we're going to do a single turtle knot this time. <laughs> 